watching us online this morning. It's a beautiful morning. I'm glad that you're here. Obviously, we've got some space today, so if you're sitting six feet from somebody and you're not comfortable in that mask, you're welcome to take it off. I do ask that you put it back on if you're going to sing or speak or anything like that, um, and I also ask that you put it back on when you leave, but I think we've got plenty of space in here if you're comfortable uh, doing that. If not, most certainly leave it on. That would be great. So I want to welcome you to worship, welcome you to the sanctuary, uh, welcome you to uh, cyberspace, wherever you are watching us from and worshiping from. I'm glad that you're here in whatever way that you have chosen to be here. As always, our offering plates are in the back. As always, we have an online giving option or a chance to mail in an offering. All of, that, all of those opportunities still exist. Uh, communion is uh, bring your own. Did everybody grab one that needed to? Did you grab one on your way through? Okay, so obviously that. I hope at home you have your elements prepared in front of you and that you have made that space holy that's in front of you. Uh, just a couple of things. It's a board meeting week this week. If that pertains to anybody that's here, uh, that will be a Zoom board meeting at 6.30 on Tuesday. If you have not gotten it, you should have an invitation. If you have somehow missed it or need another one, Actually, I'll probably send everybody one again um, tomorrow so that you'll have those. And then our online Bible study slash prayer time is Wednesdays at 6.30 uh, if you'd like to join us. It really truly is less of a Bible study and more of just an opportunity to sit down for a minute and allow God's Word to kind of speak to us. We don't actually do any study of the Word, but we do a lot of reading it and listening to it and praying over it and seeing how God is speaking to us. So if you'd like to join us at 6.30 on Wednesday, just for 30 minutes, you're welcome to do that as well. So we come before God in all times and in all places. God who is our beginning. God who is our ending. God in whose perfect image we were created. We come now to worship and praise God's holy name. I ask that you stand if you're able and join me for the call to worship that's printed on the screen, following by, followed by carefully singing our opening hymn called Gather Us In. Let's stand together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. God forgives and heals us and crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. God, God satisfies, satisfies us with good as long as, as, long as we live, live. So, our so our youth is renewed like, like the eagles. God is, God is gracious and slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Gather us in.
So as we have done for the past several weeks since we've been gathering in person for worship, if you do have personal prayer concerns, I certainly invite you, if, you're, if you certainly want to, to stay afterwards and we will offer a prayer for our individual prayer concerns, our personal prayer concerns. Um, for now, I invite that you're, you to be in an attitude and a spirit of prayer while you allow me to speak to God on our behalf and we'll follow that together with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer this morning as we pause to worship you. We are living in strange and unprecedented times. Times of loud, angry voices that have driven people apart. Times of too many voices making it impossible to discern the truth. Times of fear, times of obstinance, times of grief and loss. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, as we come to you, our one truth, our one quieting voice, our one hope. We take time to worship you and look to you as the source of our joy and our peace. So we pause this morning to be thankful, grateful, thankful for each day as it comes. Thankful for the beauty and the warmth of summertime. Thankful for family and friends that make this time bearable. Open our eyes to times of joy and laughter. And help us to appreciate each other for the unique gifts that we all bring to the table. As always, we pause this morning, O oh God, to pray for our world as it is right now. For the challenges that surround so many in far-reaching ways. For those who are struggling financially, emotionally, Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation as it stands divided, Lord, hear our prayer. For your church, struggling to stay connected with your people, Lord, hear our prayer. May we be what someone needs today, in whatever way they need it. This is what we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray as we pray it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So I took the liberty this week of recording a children's sermon in the event that uh, our children are watching, or they may go back and watch it, or I'll probably stick it up on YouTube for them to go back and watch later. But the scripture lesson for today about the weeds and the wheat, and then looking at my yard, it just lent itself to a children's moment. So here we are. I'm sitting out here in front of my house showing you a picture of my beautiful petunias, my really amazing daisy bush that has all of these wonderful daisies on it. But in the middle of this kind of really pretty setting is this terrible looking weed right there. And there's another one right there. And they're just growing up right with all of the beautiful flowers. Everything is trying to grow together. And it reminds me of the scripture today about Jesus talking uh, telling a story about a farmer who sowed some seed in a field and the wheat and the weeds grew at the same time, just like my flowers are doing right here along with my weeds. And the, he was asked about that. And, and they asked the farmer, what should we do about those weeds? I don't want to pull them up because it might ruin the beautiful plants that's already there. And Jesus said, you know, maybe you should just leave the truth and let them grow up together and I'll take care of it at the time of the harvest. I think that's a good lesson for us because sometimes we want to make judgment calls about people, you know, who's good, who's bad, who's in, who's out, and we think that that's our responsibility to make that judgment, but really it's not. It's God's job. And so our job is to grow together and to share God's love wherever we can and in ways that we can think of and be being kind and honest and nice and all of those things. 
And there's always going to be bad. And there's always going to be good. And we let God take care of it at the end. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. So I know that as you grow and as you learn about God, it's, it's going to be kind of hard to understand and try not to judge people or make a, a, a call against somebody or something that's bad. But really, you know, we let that up to God. We live our best life. We are as kind and as compassionate as we know how to be. And we share God's love with those around us and we let the rest to God. So I hope you have a great Sunday and I look forward to the time when we can be back together because I miss you a lot. All right, bye. So a hint on the scripture from the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew, which is verses 24 through 30, uh, read, read, read to you, excuse me, read to you from the New Living Translation of Scripture. Jesus told them another parable, and you'll remember last week we had a, a parable, parables being stories that Jesus told uh, to make a point. So Jesus told them yet another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. And when the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds appeared also. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in the field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. And that's what I say about my big ones that are sprouting in my yard. An enemy did this. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Now, by now we're in the middle of, heat in summer, of the heat of summer, and this parable of the weeds and the wheat is timely as we go out to mow our weeds. Do you, know, you have to just mow weeds? Oh, let me see. Yeah? Uh-huh. Or we pull them out of our gardens. Hardy things, those weeds, aren't they? Why are they so much hardier than everything else? You ever wonder that? Why? So in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus continues this storytelling, parable-weaving pattern that he's on, using images of planting and growth and harvest, but this one has a bit of an unsettling twist. Because an unseen enemy comes in and sows weeds among the good stuff, and the workers ask what to do about that. Do we pull them up? Do we hoe them out? Do we uproot uh, the weeds? And he says, no, because, you know, you could do some damage. Anybody ever pulled up a weed that actually was a plant? Bill Gray, maybe? Uh, yeah? Uh-huh? Yeah. I mean, it happened. I, so, yeah. I, I didn't pull them up. I mowed over it. He mowed over it. He didn't pull it up. He mowed over it in his defense.
for me to read today. Y'all just take a deep breath. Think about that parable again. I'm talking to myself there for a minute. Mary Jo, just take a deep breath and read this parable one more time. Okay? Because in so many ways we are too quick to dismiss what we don't understand. And we're too quick to make those judgments without even trying to understand. The parable may be a hard reminder to us about not worrying so much about others. To neither judge nor write off those who seem to be less than we think they should be. It's both humbling and encouraging at the same time. Secondly, the parable encourages us, encourages me. I'm telling you what, this was my parable today, so y'all can just listen in. This parable encourages us not to beat ourselves up about what in our hearts might not be quite so stellar of an example of faith. If we consider that both the wheat and the weeds are part of this heart of ours, and we admit that, this inner landscape, then there's something that I find very reassuring about being told, okay, just leave those, just leave them alone, and we'll get it sorted out. That's what God said. Okay? There's a compassionate wisdom. I said it that. I think. There's a compassionate wisdom in, against pulling up the tender shoots of wheat in an attempt to get rid of the weeds. I, what I'm meaning is so many of us are ashamed or disappointed by maybe some of our shadowy aspects or our flaws and just kind of like a failed dieter <laughs> you know we want to purge ourselves and get rid of what we see as our failures which is not a bad thing to want to get rid of what we see as our failures but what we see as our failures might not be a failure to somebody else I don't know this farmer was much more trusting in the natural process of it all and not panicked by the imperfections of the crop. So I think in this parable, that's another way to look at it, that we can hear the loving and calm reassurance of the master gardener saying, you're okay, we'll get this sorted out. Trust that it will all be well. And thirdly, I think, that's another way, there's, here's three ways. You can pick for yourself which way you want to look at this parable. But thirdly, I think the parable, and all of those seed parables, point to the seasonal nature of this soul's journey for growth. What we regard as weeds may be an important part of the growth process along our spiritual journey. Those things about ourselves that we might have identified as weeds, as failures or flaws, may just be important to our growth and development as we grow into wise and compassionate people. Think about this. Think about this a minute. If you think about it, is not your own experience with grief and loss the catalyst for allowing you to be a little bit more compassionate for somebody that's also going through grief and loss because you've been there? Is not our own struggle with Whatever it is, X, Y, or Z, that we struggle with, does that not give us a better ability to walk alongside someone else who struggles with that? Is not the awareness of our own failures, doesn't that help us to be a little bit more patient and encouraging for others that we might dismiss? Let's not be so quick to pull all those weeds out of there. Maybe, just maybe. Those things that we call weeds, or sins, or wounds, or whatever term you want to give them, might actually be points of entry to God's grace. God can use what we dismiss as broken, or flawed, or failed. God can use that as a way to get into our hearts and create this thing of beauty. Where we seem, where weeds seem to flourish, I think we are being reminded that grace and healing are possible and can abound. And I think we're being encouraged to have the patience and the generosity and the hopefulness of this farmer. Even so, Lord Jesus, teach us your wisdom as we grow in you and you in us. 
Help us to leave the judgment and the sorting it all out to you. Amen. Something to think about as we prepare ourselves for coming around the table. And as we prepare ourselves for coming around the table, we do a couple of things. And if you want to take some time to get your elements out and prepared now, it would be a good time. Those of you at home, if you have those in front of you, it would be kind of a good time to get those out and be ready to think about coming to the table. Because we come to the table just as we are. And when we do that, God has God's arms open and ready to accept us. Should not we be the same? with those who want to come around our table. And so we come to this table, we bring our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, we bring the gift of ourselves, so that we might experience God's ultimate gift, the gift of Jesus Christ for us. And so we come to this time. In our tradition, as you know, it is central to who we are as worship. We use these symbols as the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, just symbols. It doesn't matter what they are. It doesn't matter what's in front of you. It doesn't matter what image is in your mind. They are symbols of the amazing love that God has for you by sending Jesus. So may we come to this table with whatever we have to remember and to give thanks to God for this amazing gift. So we come to the table, we'll hum or sing softly our communion hymn, it is Come Share the Lord.
As we prepare to take the bread and drink the wine, we do so in remembrance of the broken body and spilled blood, that we might have our sins forgiven and life everlasting. In his name we pray, amen. And on that night in the upper room, he took the bread, he broke it, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do so in remembrance of me. And likewise the wine, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Drink all of it in remembrance of me. to remember to point out to those of you that are here and those of you that are watching, Phil, if you want to shot our, our um, altar flowers are uh, given today by Beth Abeck. So we're thankful for her that we have those here in our sanctuary today. As always, for what it's worth, <laughs> God is here. And it's been good to be in God's house to worship God today. So thank you for being here. Thank you for for watching. I hope that God continues to bless you as you go about this week. I invite you to stand and we will sing our closing song, lightly, gently sing, our closing song, Song of Hope. Let's stand together.